All right, in the previous video, we discussed how we can uh, analyze and interpret a decision tree based on this, uh, you know, literally uh, tree output uh, here. However, as you probably notice, it's quite cumbersome. It's quite difficult uh, to do this. Uh, an easier way is to look at the features importances. What does it mean? It means that uh, the decision tree would allow you to look at the importance of each of these variables uh, and, and compare them with each other because it's going to provide a feature importance value between zero and one, zero meaning the least important, whereas one meaning the ma uh, most important feature uh, for, for the classification purpose of the decision tree, right? So uh, here you, you, you notice that the very first uh, feature based on which the split has been done was uh, CP, right? So you can right off the bat know that this is the most important feature. However, it is very difficult to compare the importance of the CP with, say, the importance of H, right? Uh, or the importance of CA. So we know that the next two important features are are CA and H, however, we don't know how important they are relative to CP or compared to each other. Uh, the, uh, the option with the feature importance provides that information for us. And the way that you can, you can do it, just uh, say uh, print 32 dot feature underscore importances. And don't forget to put an underscore after the importances, right? So basically what we do here is that 3.2 is the name of the model that we trained. Remember, uh, you know, if, if you need to, you have to go back to the previous video to see how we trained this decision tree. But after you trained it, uh, it, it's been called tree two, right? So, and then this is going to go and uh, and pull the uh, feature importances for you, and then we're just saying to print it. And this is the output that you get, right? Point uh, one zero and point zero seven, and you can see it gives you the feature importances, but it's very difficult to make any meaning out of it, right? Uh, so it's very difficult to figure out what this feature importance is referring to. And most importantly, uh, it's very difficult to uh, quickly grasp the relative importance of these uh, uh, features uh, to each other. So we would like to be able to somehow visualize this information. All right, so let's go and import uh, matplotlib. Uh, and this is the line of code that we wrote previously and we discussed in detail, you know, when you want to start using the uh, PyPlot within matplotlib library, uh, you import it and you just call it whatever you want. It's customary to call it PLT so that you don't need to type in the, the whole thing. Now, what I am going to use is going to be a, uh, you know, function uh, called uh, bar H, which is going to create a horizontal uh, bar chart for you. However, uh, in order to be able to uh, use that function conveniently, I am going to need uh, one, uh, one piece of information. And that is the number of the features that we have. Basically, you know, uh, we want to know how many numbers we have here, right? And the number of information that we have already, we already know from the data sets, uh, that is 13. Those are the 13 variables that we used to predict because the whole data set originally had 14 columns or 14 variables. One of them was the target, the remaining 13 were the uh, features. Uh, here, uh, I can do this using the uh, shape. So uh, what I'm going to do is to create a variable and I call it n underscore features or number of features. And I say it's equal to x underscore train. This is the uh, uh, training data set that we had, right? And it only has the features uh, portion of the data. Again, in the previous video, I showed how we created this. And I say dot shape, and then in uh, I, I put one, right? So what, what happens here is that it's going to only keep the columns. If I don't, look, let me first show you what happens if I don't do this, okay? Let me just, uh, let me just have this and 
comment this out. So this is what we get. If, if I just run xtrain.shape, it gives me the shape of the, the, the uh, data set, right? It is a 242 by 13, uh, uh, 242 rows and 13 columns, right? What I want is to uh, only keep this number, the 13, the number of columns, right? That is why I put uh, one here, right? Uh, so let me just show you here. And if I say one, uh, See, I get 13, and if I had said zero, I would have got 242, all right? So this is just a trick to basically keep the uh, number of features or number of the predictor variables uh, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the variable for me, all right? So let me just delete this, and I only keep the number of features, right? So now we already know what is in the number of features. It's a value, and it's equal to 13. All right, now I'm ready to use the uh, horizontal bar chart. So I'd say plt dot bar h, all right? And then uh, the very first argument that I have to give this uh, function is the coordinates of the bars, right? So basically I have to say where I want these bars to be uh, placed at. And I'm going to say range n underscore features. Let me just copy and paste it here. All right. Now, what does it mean? Let me just first uh, run the number of features for you before I go here so that it's easier to understand. So if I type in range number of features, what's going to happen is that it's going to give me an equally spaced uh, series uh, from zero all the way to n features. And we know that n features is equal to 13, right? Uh, so let's see what it gives us. Let's see. So you get, you know, zero to 13, the range between zero to 13. And these are going to be the coordinates of your bars, right? The bars are going to start from zero, go all the way to 13. The next argument that you have to give is the height of the bars, right? So uh, you, you've said where they should be on the x-axis, basically. Now you should say how tall they should be. And, uh, okay, so let me, sorry, let me first put this here in the uh, bar h function. So plt.bar h. Uh, this is the coordinates, and then we have to say, uh, you know, how tall each bar should be, and that is uh, using uh, the information that we already have here, the three, two, that feature importances, right? So these are these values, right? These are exactly how tall we want our uh, each bar to be, so therefore we just type in three, two, dot feature underscore importances, and then another thing that you can add here as an option is basically the alignment. And you just type in align and uh, the way that you want it to be aligned. Here I want them to be center aligned, so I just type in center. Uh, that's it. Let's run this. And this is what we get. As you can see, because the name of the uh, features are not appearing here, it is very difficult to make sense of this, right? We know that there is one feature that is much more important than others, but we don't know exactly which feature it is. So it would be very helpful if instead of these numbers, we actually had the name of the features. Or in other words, we could have the ticker symbols on the uh, y-axis. So let's, let's figure this out. You can do that by the yTix function. So just type in plt, plt.yTix. And then you're going to give the uh, uh, location of the ticks that you want, right? Where you want those uh, ticks to be. So you just type in ticks is equal to, and then use the uh, numpy function arrange. And features 
First of all, this uh, n features is the same as here, right? This is the uh, n features that we have here. And just to show you what the arrange function does, let me just copy and paste it here. First comment this out. typo here. So NP that arrange, sorry. See, this is uh, the result of the arrange. It will give you an array uh, between uh, 0 to 12, it has basically 13 values, and they are uh, equally spaced, right? So that is what we want. All right. Okay, so the Vitex, this is the uh, first feature, which is the uh, location of the text. The second one is basically we have to say, okay, uh, what do we want to put the, at these places, right? And that is basically defining the labels. So I just say labels is equal to, all right, what are the labels? The labels are the uh, column names for the features, basically, right? And that is stored in our training data set, and that is the heading of the columns. So I just say uh, x underscore train dot columns. Let's see if it runs. There you go. Now you get the uh, you get the feature names on here, and even to to make it a little bit better, you can add the labels for the x-axis and the y-axis. So. Let's do that. Let's type in plot. And that is using the x label function and y label function. So I call the x label as, uh, say, features importances, and uh, the y label would be just uh, feature names. You see that feature importances is, is here, and then the feature names are here, right? So you see that the first important one is uh, CP. It's the most important one. And it uh, makes sense because you see that CP is the first feature based on which the decision tree has made the first split. And then the next two, which would be CA and H, you see that CA is here, and H is also here. So that is how you can uh, visualize the feature importances in a decision tree.